today on Go Island, we're meeting Nanaimo artist Karen Birch. She has an exhibit called Moving and Fix that's opening at the vault on Thursday night, and we're going to tell you why it's called the vault. Today on Go, the Dragon's Den is back in town, and local entrepreneurs make their pitch. Variety's got talent and baking with Bella Cakes. That and more today on Go. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen. We're now inside the Vault Coffee Shop in downtown and I'm behind me on the walls. You can see the work of artist Karen Birch. Now she took the fine arts program up at VIU at 60 years old and we're going to talk to her about her work and her opening exhibit that's taking place here on Thursday later on this edition of Go Island. In the meantime, the Dragon's Den is back in town and we're going to look at one local entrepreneur who is trying to, well, trying to to get his new waste management system out into the public. And the best of luck to Eric. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen inside the Vault Coffee Shop in downtown Nanaimo. This is Karen Birch. She's an artist who's participated in the ever popular art walk here in Nanaimo. How many years in a row have oh, you done that? I think we've done it for at least four or five years. Okay. Yeah. And this is your work on the walls it is. behind it's us. It's a, called Moving and Fixed. A collection of work that's been produced in the last few years and uh, uh, pieces that are too large to have uh, many of in your own house, so you were it's wonderful to have a chance to come here to Demeter's uh, Coffee Vault and it has, see them all at once on, up, hanging up in, on the wall. And you were saying that this is one of the, the largest sort of collections all in one place of bringing yeah. your work from the studio into a coffee shop. Why is it important to have work in a coffee shop? Are you hoping to sell most of it? Oh no, it's a, just a chance to uh, share it with your community. I think that uh, both myself and my uh, fellow painter Diane Brown have, have had a chance to use this space and it's, uh, it's not a question of sales, although I'm sure that would be fine. Yeah, it's, it's always just, nice, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's mostly a chance just to see what our work looks like as a unit and to see how it's changed and how it's uh, evolving. Right, now there's a piece behind you oh. over your shoulder, it's a sea urchin. Tell me about yes. that one and there seems to be an underwater theme in a yes. lot of the works here. Yeah. I've got um, anemones and urchins and eelgrass particularly was the focus of a series of paintings that I did last year and it's, um, uh, my concern is about the e environment and the estuary as the nursery for all the ocean going uh, octopus and fish and all the little sea life so um, because of that I focused on underwater themes for a series of paintings. And how do you get the images? Do you oh, work from a photograph? I, some, some I work from photographs. Um, the one, the one uh, that's uh, the anemone and the urchins was from a trip to uh, Euclid to the marine uh, there and their mm -hmm. tanks of uh, sea life, and so. And then mixed in with sea life, we have pictures of your grandmother and yes. mother. How does yeah. that fit in? Oh. And your grandson, your grandson's yes. here having lunch today as well. <laughs> I'm having a great time. Uh, just getting to know some of my relatives that have passed away through photographs and uh, one, was a, one was a very famous in my heart uh, photo of my mum standing in a fishing boat on a lake in the prairies holding up uh, uh, her lily pads with the blossoms and uh, a jackfish. So I just thought when through the painting of them and the painting of my grandmothers I came like I felt like I came to know them a bit better. Mm -hmm. The one of my grandmother feeding the bears was a story that was like a little adventure in the past. And uh, the one of gr my other grandmother sitting in her living room was a, definitely a period piece that included recreating her uh, wallpaper. <laughs> and it's, even though it's so personal to you, I, I think these images speak to other people. And that's what art can do is really make people reflect on their own yeah. heritage their own lives yes. what kind of response do you get from people when they look at pictures of your yeah. family I always hear their stories and I think that's really great I hear oh yes we've had an experience like that in our family or that looks just like my grandma <laughs> oh, so yeah. sweet and there's going to be lots of stories taking place on Thursday night between 4 and 7 
for the opening of Moving and Fixed here at the Vault Coffee Shop in downtown Nanaimo. We're going to be back and we'll talk a little bit more with Nanaimo artist Karen Birch. In the meantime, here is Annette Lucas for one local teen. Her dream, their dream, has been to perform on stage. And thanks to Variety of Hearts, they're getting the opportunity to do that. You can catch the variety of hearts on both Shaw TV and Global on February 16th and 17th. And for more information, you can visit the website variety.bc.ca. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV. This is a piece of work called Pomegranate by Nanaimo-based artist Karen Birch. She took the fine arts program up at VIU at the age of 60, which I just think is so fabulous. And this is your second attempt at... I'm using oil paint as I have before, but this is the first time I've been using a palette knife for painting and bringing in the real textures of the different uh, areas. So well, that's, a, that's a lot of a lot of paint on. That's there. a lot of paint on there. It is, and it was really a lot of fun. And it was a at times it became a group effort um, between me and the people that I paint with. There were times when I'd have to call on their help, and thanks to them, I was able to uh, increase the size of the wedge of open pomegranate to balance the other two and to uh, create some different uh, contrasts that I think help create the overall painting. Can you describe how, how it might be unbalanced with a smaller wedge? It, it just uh, that the large spaces would be overpowering to the smaller piece. Okay. And uh, because this was a different color, it does stand out more than the rounded shapes of the pomegranate. So an illusion already, yeah. perhaps, of it being yeah. a little bit bigger. Yes. And yeah. it's uh, always a challenge to be able to create and sustain a 3D form on a 2D format. So. We're trying to do that in television all the yeah. time. We've got lots of depth of field here, right, Staz? <laughs> <laughs> Thank One you. One of the things that you were saying, Karen, she said, we, 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 and it really highlighted mm -hmm. how integral the group of women that you paint with, there's four of them, yes. and you said it's a very quiet process. Yes, we ha we work together uh, every, most afternoons painting. and 30 it's, hours a week, you said. Yeah, it's, sometimes it can be that, and the best part is that these uh, uh, we are supporting one another to do our own work. But we also provide a little bit of support to each other. When things get rougher, we hear a big sigh. We'll we'll get together and uh, do a little brainstorming over what to, would make our painting work. That's fabulous. That's very inspiring. Yes. We're going to come back with a little bit more on Karen Birch later on this edition of Go Island. We're going to talk about painting upside down, and we're going to find out why the vault is called the vault. We're going to take a short break first, though. Still ahead today on Go Island, winter driving tips for seasonal safety and higher learning at Bella Cakes. That and much more still ahead today on Go Island. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen. We're here looking through a little portfolio of Nanaimo artist Karen Birch. Now we talked about painting upside down. And we're not kidding. <laughs> no, I, um, I was uh, looking at um, the work of George Baselitz, who was a German neo-expressionist painter. Right. And uh, at the time that he was uh, painting, he used the technique of painting upside down so that he would be able to see the negative spaces more easily in the painting and uh, okay. not be caught so much by the content. And uh, so, okay. In, so if we turn this upside down, yeah. that's how you painted it. I painted initially. it that way. It was based on a, on a painting I had done of family members, and it has a, a fairly uh, morose feeling to it. <laughs> but, but it was really lovely to use his palette and use his technique of being able to see the spaces between the objects rather than dealing with the, the objects, objects themselves. themselves. And you found that valuable? Oh, yes, it was valuable. a lot. Yeah, it was. In have fact, you done any more since? Oh, I have, and I've actually recommended it to people sometimes who are getting caught with how to do compositions and place objects in their painting. Interesting. Yeah. And this was an assignment. It was an at assignment. The fine arts program at VIU. Yeah. Okay, now that that painting will be brought into the Vault Coffee Shop for or the Thursday exhibit, night. Yeah. which starts on Thursday night, four until seven here. And now another thing that's going to be brought into the vault is not a painting at all, but a sculpture. Yes. And this looks very different from your painting. Yes, it is. Um, I like to work in three dimensions as well, and I really enjoyed the sculpture aspect of working at VIU. So uh, this past summer when I was uh, 
having little spare time, I found the components <laughs> of a sculpture. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, a piece that's made out of sewer pipe, plastic bands, marine vinyl, bed legs and beads, hair curlers and cord. And how big is it? It's, uh, it's between three to five, eight feet long. Okay. And, uh, it's, um, it speaks to your, your focus on the environment. It really does. Too. It yeah. does. As you can see, I photographed it down at Piper's Lagoon because it really seemed to fit into the environment there. And how is it going to fit into the vault? Yeah, it's going to be sitting in the corner, hopefully not getting into too much trouble. <laughs> I love your work, Karen. Thank you Thank very you. much. Great to talk to you. Karen Birch has an exhibit here called Moving and Fixed. It opens on Thursday night from 4 until 7. Come on down. Runs through until the end of March. Uh, we're going to throw things over now to Melissa Hall. Have you checked your tires lately? It's time for another winter driving tip. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4 and we're inside the Vault Coffee Shop in downtown Nanaimo and I've always wondered why it is called the Vault. Well now I know. This building was designed by Francis Rattenbury, the same guy who designed the Empress in downtown Victoria. And this building was originally a bank and the Vault from that bank is still in existence back in there behind the kitchen somewhere. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. And we're gonna throw things over now to Melanie Panetta. It's another installment of Higher Learning. That brings us to the end of this edition of Go Island. Karen Birch will have an opening exhibit here at the Vault Coffee Shop on Thursday between 4 and 7. Come on down and check it out. Now, another event that's coming up that hopefully we don't need to remind you about if you've got a loved one in your life or maybe a little crush on someone. Valentine's Day, of course, is on February the 13th and love is in the air on Vancouver Island. Shaw TV has put together a half-hour Valentine's Day special, our gift to you. We tour Vancouver Island from Victoria to Nanaimo, Port Alberni and Mount Washington collecting prizes along the way. We've put it all together for more than a thousand dollars worth of items to help you keep love in the air. It includes a two-night luxury stay, chocolates, wines. You'll have to watch on February 14th to find out more details and of course enter to win. Thank you for watching this edition of Go Island. We'll see you next time.